This is a 980 CKNW podcast. You've heard him on my show before. He is a prostate cancer survivor diagnosed at the age of 57. He initially had no plans to discuss it with anybody, but he soon realized that it was very therapeutic for him to talk about it and that it may be therapeutic for others. So he decided to share his story. On the line with me is author of the book, Prostate Cancer Strikes, Gogs Gagnon. Welcome back to the show, Gogs. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you for having me back. You're very welcome. And you have a little gift for my listeners. We're going to wait a little bit for that. But uh, tell me why you didn't want to share your story. I know it's a devastating diagnosis, but initially you were a bit shocked by this. And so um, why was it that you didn't want to talk about it? Well, it took me a little while actually afterwards to realize why. And it, it really was, I didn't want to burden my spouse or my family with with the problem, I, I thought in some weird way that I was protecting them by not sharing my my feelings with them. But it took a little while for me to to, to realize that afterwards why I shut down. Uh, but after I started to open up and talk about it, it it really was very helpful and therapeutic for me, and it it. it, it made me feel so much more better to talk about it. That's great. And, you know, a lot of guys um, don't like to share their feelings. Uh, Feelings is often the F word, I say. Um, (sighs) You know, so it's more difficult for men to share their feelings. In general, there are some guys who will wear their hearts on their sleeves. But but it's also shocking to get a diagnosis of cancer. And I imagine it was for you as well. Absolutely. When I was in the doctor's office and he told me that I had cancer, basically I... I shut down at that moment, and he continued to tell me about my test results and everything. And well, all I really heard was cancer, and everything else was really a blur. <laughs> it really was an overreaction, of course, looking back, because I didn't even I didn't even know what my test results were. I didn't know how if it was low grade, high grade, or anything. It just it's just when you hear that word cancer. It, uh, it was quite devastating to hear the words. I think it's a shock for most people. And, and some of the prostate cancer treatments, uh, which you outline in your book and um, talk about what you chose, can cause some negative quality of life issues for men, such as urinary incontinence and erectile dysfunction. And I get a lot of men in my clinical practices and, uh, and online, because I see uh, patients online as well, and they may be a year out and they may have not taken the advice of the doctor because their brain shut down. They didn't hear it. They didn't realize what the prescription of a PDE5 inhibitor was, the, the Cialis or Viagra. Often men will say, um, I didn't know, I wasn't going to be having sex, so I didn't take the Viagra. Um, did you find that um, as an issue in part of your journey? Um, I did, and I was given information about penile re- rehabilitation. I was given lots of information, and, and I'm sure the doctor told me a lot about it, but I wasn't in the, in the state of mind to to process the information. And that's why I, I think it's very important that I, I recommend that if, if possible, you bring somebody with you to your doctor's appointment so that they could, you know, listen and take notes for you and help you through that process. So it wasn't until later that I, you know, I, I went back and I learned that here's all the things that I really should have been doing. And um, so I, so it's something that I really should have been at the beginning, but I just wasn't in that state of mind. Yeah, you make a great point because I think that's a critical piece of information for physicians to hear because they oftentimes will even say to me, I gave them the information, I told them, but we don't realize that sometimes patients' brains shut shut down in the time of stress. And when anybody hears the diagnosis of cancer, I imagine that would be as stressful as anything else uh, could possibly be in life. Uh, but you did start to share your story and you started to feel better, you mentioned. And and so you've really shared intimate details of your diagnosis, the surgery, and your recovery. Um, you know, what was your choice of uh, treatment? Well, I, I was given given a number of options, and um, I chose surgery. And um, you know, looking back on it, I I think I made a quick decision, and it's something that I, I would recommend that that people don't make a quick decision. Even my my uh, doctor told me not to make a quick decision and recommended that I go to a, a 
uh, a support group and, and do some research. But I, I made that quick decision, and I think, you know, it, it worked out for me. But I think it's not a good way to do things. You shouldn't just make a quick decision and just hope for the best. You really need to step back and make sure that you you give yourself time to recover just from the hearing the word that you have cancer, that you're going to need some time just to get over that fact first before you jump into making decisions. So I, I, I think I was, was lucky as my, my results have been good, but you know, I, I really want people to, you know, if, if you're in that position, to try not to make a quick decision. Right. And the term nerve sparing prostatectomy, was that um, nerve sparing yes. radical prostatectomy? Was that what you were? Yes, yes. That's what I had. And, and, and the nerve sparing is something that you really can't decide at, uh, until, the, the, you know, if you, if you decide you want to have surgery, then the doctor will spare your nerves only if they feel that they haven't been yet invaded with cancer. Uh, if there's any risk that they've been invaded with cancer, then they will be taken out. Uh, so I, I, I was lucky. It was one of the first questions I had for my surgeon when I woke up in recovery is, did you spare my erection nerves? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it's a bit of a misnomer out there, the nerve sparing, because in speaking with urologists who've done this surgery for a number of years, they tell me, you know, it's it's really a, a super highway of invisible nerves down there. There are so many of them that it's so difficult. And a lot of patients will still experience, and I don't think they realize this, they still may experience erectile dysfunction and urinary incontinence, even if they've had the nerve sparing uh, surgery. So you uh, you did suffer some of that as well? Afterwards? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely, and, and uh, as you say, it's a highway of, of network of nerves, and some of them may be damaged, some of them may be cut, and some of them just may not work the way they used to. So even though they're there, they may not be doing their job, uh, and it may take years, or you may never recover. Yes. And uh, so, uh, mm-hmm. but those who recover best are those who have at least tried penile rehabilitation, which you mentioned oh, earlier. Um, Yes, that's a major help. You, you need to, to to have that penile uh, rehabilitation where you you need blood flow. And, and the problem is when the nerves are, are damaged and they're in a, a state of shock and they're not doing their job, then there's very little blood in the penis, very little blood flow. And the longer it goes without blood, then you'll have problems in the future. So you need to help stimulate blood flow. And that's something I, did, I my doctor did tell me, but I never heard it. But I, he did give me the information, which I found out later. But right. Well, I'm glad you uh, got that information and found that out. Uh, that's great. So, Gogs Gagnon, you have a little gift for my listeners, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, for today and tomorrow, uh, Canada Day weekend, I'm giving the electronic version of the book away free. Wonderful. And how do people get that? Uh, they just need to go to Amazon.ca and search for my book, Prostate Cancer Strikes, and they'll notice that the price uh, will be $0, and they can just purchase it for $0, and there's no limit. Uh, as many people could uh, get a free copy all the way until midnight on July 1st. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Gogs Gagnon, for your amazing work and for sharing your story. His website is gogsgagnon.com. Thanks for joining me, Gogs. Thank you very much, Maureen. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> Yes, happy Canada Day. Thank you.